Hey, this is Dr. Kelly Cagle. And for season three, we're doing things a little differently because we know that a healthy and happy dad and mom starts with a healthy and happy husband and wife. So I decided to bring along my husband, Josh, as co-host so we could share some real life stuff of the ways that we learn how to fight to make our marriage thrive. You are listening to season three of the Parenting IQ podcast, Learning to Fight. Hey guys, episode three of the Parenting IQ podcast today, where we're going to be talking about frustrations and disappointments and how we fight through that. Uh, Before we get going with that, I want to remind you to subscribe to the Parenting IQ podcast. And by the way, if you haven't checked out the YouTube channel yet, I want to encourage you to do that and subscribe to that as well. It's where you get to see, uh, really just watch this conversation that Josh and I are having here in our studio. And also, if you go to drkellycagle.com, that's where you'll find the notes, a whole bunch of resources. It's a place where you can choose your title, whether you are a parent, educator, or business leaders. And we have a lot of resources for whatever your title is. So if you want to head over there right now, um, I'd really appreciate it. And I know you're going to find information that will be beneficial for you wherever you find yourself um, as far as your title. Now, I do want to say that these frustrations and disappointments, as we were talking about this, it's like a given. Mm -hmm. I mean, lots and lots of moments came to mind. And I want to point out that uh, one of them happens quite often, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you were asking me uh, today, uh, we we just go back and forth sometimes and, hey, what do we want to, how do we want to wrestle through some of these things Mm -hmm. and share with our audience? Uh, to try to help bring people in and understand that, hey, we all go through things, right? And so wh- one of the one of the thoughts that was going through my mind is what really frustrates me, probably on a common basis. And I started really thinking about that progressive commercial <laughs> where you just, you know, that that becoming like your parent is progressive, right? Yeah. Or is it, okay. So becoming like your parents. And I don't know about you guys, but... I, I love some of those. Okay. <laughs> but what, what I think about when, whenever those things come up is when, when I was growing up, my dad, he was, when he would get home, he was such a production minded yeah. person and he would get home and he, you, you would hear him and you're like, Oh, God, oh goodness. You know, we Footsteps. didn't, we didn't do whatever chores or whatever we had to do. So as soon as he got there, you're kind of hopping up like military style, like trying to hurry up and go do whatever, but you're late. Okay. Yeah. And so you always felt like you're on edge, right? Mm-hmm. And so whenever I fast forward to now and I've got the to-do list of things that are maybe my own projects I want done, yours that you need done for mm-hmm. me, and we and I start to get something d- going. Yeah. And lo and behold, I'm in the middle of it, whether like one time I was changing a toilet. And those are always fun. Oh, my gosh. Changing a toilet. And you get you get the thing undone. Then all of a sudden you need a Crescent Ranch or whatever. And I don't have it with me, you know. And so I'm talking to myself my, most of the time. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'll ask the boys to come help because they need to learn some of this stuff. Right. Kind of like what my dad used to do. Yeah. And I didn't realize that. I'm becoming like my parent right there, you know. Why don't why aren't they enjoying this, you know? And then I remember I hated doing that yeah. stuff. So anyway, you know, I, I get I get into the the tool thing. I'm like, "Levi, go find me some tools." And he gets freaked out. He can't find anything. He 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 doesn't know where to look or he says it's not there and I, I and I could swear it's right in front of him. And so I'll get my voice loud and then you're in the other room. You're, "What's going on?" You know, by that time I'm like, "I don't need you in here." You know, you just stay out and, you know, we're, we're blowing up, you know, you need to turn this into a teaching opportunity, which you always (laughs) tell me it ain't a teaching opportunity. The toilet's a mess. I need this done. (laughs) And so anyways, just little things like that, that can really build, uh, you know, because you're right. It, 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 I I totally miss the opportunities to teach. Yeah. And I think it's interesting to bring up, if you guys haven't listened to episode two from last week, you brought up this point about at all moments, our kids are watching us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you started this story saying that this is how my dad used to do. Right. Right. And so quite often it's just these like flashback moments that you say, wow, this is how I learned back then. 
you know, not that it was intentional that your dad was like intentionally doing this on purpose, you know, but, but then now we fast forward and we're like, wow, I don't want my kid to also do this in his, when he's a dad, mm -hmm. you know, so those things that you're like, okay, I will not be my, my mom or my dad in this area, this right. area, I think in frustrations and in disappointments is really hard to, yeah, we're talking about um, like how that affects our kids, but ultimately that also can be a gap in your marriage. Oh yeah. You no, we're, if, if I'm fighting, if I'm frustrated about these tools, you're going to hear about it Yeah, because it's, somehow it's your fault uh, always, you know, because I, but, but at the end of the day, I'm just frustrated. I'm pissed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I don't recognize it at that, at that time. I'm just heated. Cause I, yeah. this project I thought was going to take me 30 minutes. has taken four and a half hours. Which is every project that uh, you work on. It does on. seem like every project, you know, and, 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 and it can be just very, very difficult. And so, yeah, I, I come like unglued on you. Yeah. And sometimes the kiddos, because at the end of the day, I just want the job done. Yeah. Yeah. And you are a venter, which we'll talk about yeah. more in just a little bit whenever we bring up the self-awareness piece. But talking now about disappointments, because frustrations are often, you know, emotions that come up in the house. But I also think that disappointments a lot of times um, can can create yeah. space and distance in mm -hmm. a relationship. And I'll I'll just share on a more serious and maybe, you know, not to make things, not to be a Debbie Downer, but we struggled getting pregnant, right? We, with mm. our, our second round of kids is what I like to say. We had Levi and when he was two, we decided, okay, let's start trying again. And then several months went by, about six months went by and got pregnant and miscarried, got pregnant again. And then that second time we're like, okay, this is it. And we were gonna tell our families at Christmas, miscarried again. And then it was a year and a half that went by before we uh, got pregnant again, which we also miscarried one more time. But that season that a lot of times your mom even says often, Kelly, I didn't even know that you were going through that. My mom has also said, I'm so sorry that I wasn't there for you. And I've told both of them and I've told you and I've told myself, I didn't even know the, how deep my disappointment was in that season of nothing that we could change per se, right? We were doing our part <laughs> to, to get pregnant, okay. <laughs> but, but it was such a deep disappointment that was taking place in my heart that I didn't even give myself the space or the time to think through that, to process that with you because um, my friends also say this about me. I'm not a big feeler. And they remind me that it's okay to be vulnerable, as I said last week, but it's okay to feel. And they draw that out of me a lot of times. And I didn't have that at the time. And so in that disappointment, it almost distance, created distance in me, like from me, from my emotions, mm -hmm. that there was so much disappointment, so much hurt, so much sadness that, um, it, it did, I wouldn't say create space between us, but it was hard to take well, those pregnancy tests. And, you know, as a guy, we process those things a lot different, you know, and this, this could be really a series that we talk about, you yeah. know, all in one setting for a long period of time, yeah. because unpacking those things that the first time I mean, you guys all know how it is, hopefully when, when you, when you do uh, notice that you're pregnant, right? That excitement, the emotion, the high that you're on. Uh, and then, and then you go through that moment where, oh no, I lost this. It was unanticipated. Yeah. You didn't see it coming at all. And, and then you go through it a lot different than me. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm more just looking at you like, you know, are you going to be okay? Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, you're kind of holding it in, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And then I remember with the second one, you start in your mind, like, well, I don't, should we say anything to anybody? Yeah. You start getting a little bit like, reserve uh -huh. withdrawn yeah with 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 your close friends or family mm -hmm. just like you're saying you know and so then the third one it was like oh my goodness yeah that we, we i don't know if we really even told hardly anybody yeah. by that time because you're almost betting against yourself in some regards mm -hmm. and and it is very difficult and so as a man though what what i experienced when you were going through that is yeah i was disappointed but i also thought that 
I, I don't know how disappointed I was in losing these 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 babies mm-hmm. as much as I was just disappointed and not knowing should I be how should I feel yeah. as well, mm-hmm. you know, and how should I handle, you know, our marriage yeah. our what what are we doing here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we have several friends who have also gone through similar scenarios and we know that it's, it's really um, so sticky, so unique, so painful. And, and, and I even recently we were talking to a couple who were going through a miscarriage and that's what I said this week. And this was recent. This week, the boys, somehow this conversation came up with the boys and I was crying right in front of them. And Titus was the one that we got pregnant with after the three miscarriages and he's seven years old. So it's been eight, nine, 10 years since these things have gone on in our lives. And it's, I still cry over it. And even though I I have had, we've had two kids since the miscarriages, those disappointments are real and they're still part of our story. And so I think that even in, in the journey of, of life, of like this learning to fight, it's not the fighting doesn't necessarily always have to be an argument of a heated argument, right? It can be in the, in the hurt, in the pain, in the seasons of, wow, that was a disappointing time in my life. Or maybe how, you know, all of the things that we can come up with in life, you know, we, we went, I went to school for many, many years and there was a, a lot of roller coasters and a lot of emotions in that time. I have a lot of friends that are also pursuing graduate degrees and things like that. And those are those are hard seasons because disappoint, disappointing things come. Maybe you have to miss some of your kids' events to go to class and birthdays and dinners and all these things. You know, those are those are seasons that you know you just go through. So I think that even in that learning to fight, it's important to even process these things. Well, and in, and in, in many times when we think about like a, a frustration, you know, when, when I'm talking about uh, this project, this project is just for a moment. Yeah. Right. A fight is just for a moment. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes it can feel like because of this, when we talk about disappointments and as far as the example of the miscarriages, it, it felt more like a lifestyle. It didn't feel like a moment yeah. because you were never going to get out of that lifestyle of disappointment unless you got what you wanted, right? Mm-hmm. Which was another baby. And that was very difficult because mm-hmm. there was no guarantee. Mm-hmm. And we had to understand or to even process that, hey, Levi might have been our only yeah. child. Yeah. We were really coming to terms with mm-hmm. those things. And the Lord was teaching us so many things yeah. through then. But at the same time, for our listeners, you know, there's many people, whenever we uh, experience this, I didn't realize how many people yeah. go through that. Yeah, for right? sure. And so again, when you're fighting, when you're frustrated, when you're disappointed, a lot of times you feel alone, mm-hmm. right? You feel like nobody gets you. Nobody understands. Not even your spouse. Not even your spouse. And and, and many times you're just, you can be so frustrated with yourself. You just don't even know it. Yeah. And I think what we're trying to do in life is to understand that, hey, we're in this, we're in this frustration, right? We're in this disappointment, but it's, it's for a season. Mm -hmm. It's going to pass. Yeah. And so then going through our three steps of choosing your battles wisely, what kind of fighter are you and respecting one another within this frustration and this disappointment? I think that with the choosing your battles wisely, it's really important to ask a question of, does this frustration or this disappointment, like, just like what you said, does it belong? Does it does it deserve space in my mind, in my heart, or in my home? Because for these projects, it's just right now, right? It's a toilet that I'm changing for this afternoon or whatever. I'm changing the well, toilet, by the way. Yeah, this is a story yeah. that I was <laughs> doing in the first person for you. Yes. <laughs> I'm not changing the toilet. Yeah. I will get Let's all get the bags. The- <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's just a project that you are working on in that season. So that frustration does not deserve space, you know, Right. it does not deserve space to come out at the kids or for you to come out, even at me, to come at me. You know, that's not our fault. Now, if we, cause when our kids were little, they would play with your tools all the time. They'd be digging and you'd find mm-hmm. all sorts of tools all over the yard when you'd go mow the next day. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and then you could have 
now they all talk and they can tell you, no, dad, I promise I didn't take it. Right. Well, I think in this, what it's showing me, though, when, when you look at, at fighting, you need to understand what are some common themes. Mm. So for me to be able to explain that I can get frustrated on these projects, I need to expect that, hey, there could be a moment on this next project I have coming up that I get heated, mm -hmm. you know. And so whenever I start to strategize or to think that way, I'm able to channel yeah. this frustration because it's still going to happen. Sure. I'm probably yeah. not going to have the part or I have to run to Home Depot for the 14th time. <laughs> You know, whatever it might be. Or you send me and I try to FaceTime you at Home Depot and I don't get service. Yes. And so whatever it might be, sometimes I think the the type of fighter I am is to go into it with the with the awareness of, hey, don't be don't be let down. Yeah. Don't don't allow these moments to to hit me blindsided. Mm -hmm. I should go into them thinking that it might happen mm -hmm. instead of just expecting it to go perfect. And you know that you bring a really good point is our, our whole idea behind what kind of fighter are you asking that question week in and week out is this awareness that just like I shared with you that as we went through that disappointment now, you know, I look back and I think, wow, that disappointment, I didn't have the, the self-awareness back then right. when I was going through that season. I had no idea. I was stuffing myself. And this is something that as we've gotten older, I would say in our thirties that you and I have kind of honed in more a little bit of, wow, Kelly, you really do just stuff everything down. And not that intentionally, I'm not just trying to brush th things under the rug, is that I really stuff things down, you know? And I'm not an explosive, disappointed or frustrated person like what you are. You know, you're just like saying, you know, ah, and you have, you have this like this vomit of energy I'm not that way mm -hmm. when it comes to these two areas. And, and so I think that it, that's, it's really important for you to recognize that too, that I can't just sit here and judge you for the way that you get frustrated because quite frankly, God made you that way for a purpose, right? He gave you that energy and that, that passion for a reason. Now I do think that self-control. I go back to if you get my email and if you don't, I highly encourage you to sign up for that as well. Dr. Kelly .com. I send out weekly emails with just kind of a thought that I have And this week in particular, or, or I should say my latest email that went out was about self-control, the fruit of the spirit. And I really think that Paul was intentional in the order of the fruit that it starts with love. And then whenever you go back and the disciples ask Jesus, hey, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment, the greatest law? And what did he say? Greatest commandment is to love your God. So the word love was in that. And then he said, and the second one is just as great. And it's love your neighbor as yourself. So both first and second included the word love. And here Paul goes writing this, this fruit lineup of nine characteristics. And the very first one is love. Mm -hmm. And then he wrapped it up with self-control. Mm -hmm. And I think he, it was all intentional because he knew we would struggle without it to walk in the spirit without self-control. And so even in these moments of in our marriage, you know, I'm a stuffer, you are an explosive. And it's like, how, where can we have self-control? Because my stuffing isn't healthy. Your explosive isn't healthy. You know, so working towards this self-control of Holy Spirit, I want to walk in operate in the spirit where what's the healthy, you know, the balance where I can have self-control here in mm -hmm. these areas of my life. Yeah. Well, I think whenever we're in the middle of all this, obviously self-control, I think is, uh, is a trained habit. So what, what, you know, there's a saying aim small and miss small. So we've got to have targets uh, in our marriage. We've got to have strategy and thought and communication of, how are we going to get through these fights? Who are we? Mm -hmm. So if I know that this is who I am in this frustration and guys, many times I wish I could tell you I do this well uh, when it comes to helping the kids learn. But I will say it is such a good, good moment to, to take some time. If I if I slow down yeah, and instead of mowing the yard in 26 and a half minutes, I realize it's going to take me 32 but in that 32 minutes, I've allowed my children to walk with me, Yeah. right? Then what happens? 
that I'm, I, I am not going to get as frustrated. I'm not going to then project that frustration on my wife. And at the end of the day, it's just been a whole stirring of a storm there that really I've got to humble myself mm -hmm. and come back and probably ask for forgiveness if I did something crazy, mm -hmm. you know, Which and, you're really and, good about. you know, and, and then go from there mm -hmm. instead of what I, what I'm seeing is, is whenever I, I take the time to slow down because I'm not as patient. I'm not as self-controlled in my nature. Mm -hmm. But again, when we're talking about learning how to fight, we have to learn who we are yep, and yep. know that these fights are coming yes. daily. And they're going to, just like I told you guys before, you, you know, Mike Tyson said, you have a plan until you get punched in the face. Mm -hmm. Well, every, every fight, every strategy, every thought that we come across, whether it's the topics of frustration or disappointment or anything else that we're going to cover, it's, things are still going to throw a curveball. They're mm -hmm. still going to punch us in the face. How are we going to respond? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think that's really good. And our, our pastor, pastor even recently was talking about the breastplate of righteousness and the need to protect our heart. And I think that a lot of times we get so um, caught up in the busyness of the sports and the jobs and the, and the careers and, you know, just life that, that we allow this um, a little less protection of the heart, a little less protection of the heart and of the mind where there's some holes here and there that in these moments, whenever we are not expecting, for example, the day-to-day -day things, the little petty things, the planning dinner that we were talking about um, recently, you know, and, and the enemy comes in. Mm -hmm. He is, he's smart. He knows your, where your areas of weaknesses and he uses those things against you. You know, and so I think it's so important to protect our heart, to be in the word of God and to have the self-awareness of, hey, this is not in my nature. So by walking in the spirit, by giving him room to, to, to really take control of me, of my thoughts, of my actions, of my mouth, then that is, I think, where we are, we win, if you will, yeah. where we're, we're being protected. I agree with that. Yeah. And then I think then we, we could move on to the next point. Then it's the respecting one another and these awarenesses, these awareness, right? You learn this about yourself. I'm, we're growing every day, all the time. As we teach our kids, we are learning about ourselves too. We've mentioned that I'm, we're homeschooling and we're, this, this journey is so new and eye opening for me that I've slowed down big time, even in my mind, as you're talking about you're such a, a task and such a doer. I'm that way too. But bringing them along in this journey, I've had to slow down. And so as we respect one another, it's been this space of, I feel like the entire home, the shift of, we're talking about this on a weekly basis for you guys on the Parenting IQ podcast. And it's really, uh, I think, reflecting on the whole home. And that's interesting because what that's what we've been praying for right? The transformation of homes, including ours. This isn't, we're not excluded. We're not experts here. We are in this journey, just sharing some of the things that we are learning along the way, along this journey, you know? And so we are also reaping some of the benefits of creating this safe space for each other to feel. Yeah. I mean, my, you know, the, la the, the biggest thing, my hope out of, out of this, when you asked me to come and share or to come and talk about this is uh, still wrapping up what we've started with really on the realization that we know there is no perfect marriage. Mm -hmm. There's not a perfect life. You know, I was talking in our foreman's meeting the other day, just show me, show me in a show of hands who here has a perfect team Yeah, and nobody, we can't raise our hands. There is none of that. Right. And so why do we allow these frustrations, these disappointments to surprise us. Mm -hmm. I think we just, we can, when you're talking about that breastplate of righteousness, we, we need to, we shouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Hey, this, you know, bad things can come our way. Right. But what we're called to do is to put them out and how we put them out are these strategies, patience, mm -hmm. yeah. whenever, whenever I know that I'm going into these projects, right. Mm -hmm. Um, being able, being willing to, in your disappointment with, with this one, well, the miscarriage was to have good friends. Yeah. How yeah, how important sure. it is not to recluse, not mm -hmm. to get in in too much solitude. Mm -hmm. Some solitude's good, okay, yeah. but too much of it, right? And so I think we have to make sure when we fight, 
because it's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen to our listeners. It's going to happen to us. Yeah. It does happen. Mm -hmm. And so I want everyone here to understand that you're not alone. Your marriage, we, we want the family to be transformed, mm -hmm. right? The, 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 the world is against us. The yeah. world's against marriages nowadays. I don't get married. You know, mm -hmm. th there's, there's no, there's no benefit. If anything, it's going to cause you more pain. The, the, the divorce rate's at its all-time high, so you might as well just set up for failure. And I think if we go into things without that that attack mode on, hey, I'm going to fight for yeah. my marriage, not against it. Right. I'm going to fight for it. Right. So mm -hmm. when when the what are the things that could attack it? Mm -hmm. Frustration, disappointment are big, big yeah. reasons that will attack our marriage. Mm -hmm. I even think so often, you know, I wake up and I, I try to wake up every day before the kids wake up and I re I get in the word, spend time with the Lord. And then the kids wake up and I'm like, oh, sweet babies. And I kiss and hug all of them. And then, for example, this morning, they started crying about five minutes after I kissed them. And it was because, oh, Titus but swipe my toothbrush and Micah's like, well, Ty, Micah swipe, uh, but swipe my toothbrush first. And to be honest with you, I was just so like, why in my head, I'm thinking, I don't even know what butt swipe is first of all. And I don't know that I want to know. I haven't asked him. Yeah. Yet. I don't know yet, but I, yeah. I, I kind of think it's cool as a guy, you know, I mean, it's almost like a, you know, fraternity type thought, but anyway, but I mean, just the crying was insane. That's my favorite toothbrush. And I'm just like, just go back to bed, everybody. Just go back to bed, you know, yeah. and that, and that frustration kicks in. And even that disappointment of, oh, I'm having such a good morning already. And then pow, you know, but those things, like you said, these things will happen. You've got kids, you've got life, you've got work, you've got employees, employers that are above you, below you, all around you, life happens. And so this respecting one another, I think that piece is really important in this uh, fighting about frustrations and, and disappointments is because you respect what you've got, you know, about yourself. You're like, I know I'm like this and I respect this about myself because God made me like this but also know that I need to work on this, right? That self-control piece. Uh, but I, I, I want to bring up another story that I heard one time from Brene Brown. She shared this on a, on a podcast interview. And she said that now granted her kids are grown. And so her all around us, disappointments mm -hmm. and frustrations are a little different than kids, but swiping toothbrushes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but she said, you know, sometimes I get home and I tell my husband, Steve, Steve, today was a really tough day. And they, their math is out of a hundred percent that I can give you, I'm at 20. Like I'm pretty wiped out this day, just took me out and yada, yada, yada. And then Steve was like, okay, great. I've got the other 80. I'll mm -hmm. make up for the 80. But then there are times that she says, you know, that Steve comes home. He's like, Brene, I'm at a 90 today. I had a great day. And she's like, well, I'm also at a 90. Oh, then we're having a great day. Mm -hmm. Then other times she's got 10 and he's got 10. Yeah. And that respecting piece is so important because then you create a safe space. Okay, you had a crappy day. I had a crappy day. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to have expectations of you to be this grandiose, you know, knight in a shining, whatever. Armor. Not, armor. Yeah. yeah. There's my English coming in. Uh, but, you know, that expectation, I think, is so big in our frustrations. In our so we're not disappointed, mm -hmm. you know? Well, and getting off your high horse. I mean, you know, in, in marriage, a lot of it is I, I have to live asking forgiveness. And and because I'm going to make a mistake, uh, but I'm going to own it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to like it. But I, I am going to ask at some point. It might not be immediate. Yeah. Or most time it probably won't be. Uh, but I will come back and I'm going to get off my high horse and apologize, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that is what I'm trying to do whenever I'm saying, Hey, I respect you. Yeah. Um, now sometimes I'm sure on the receiving end, you know, if I, if I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again, I need to, I need to check myself, mm -hmm. right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, just apologizing is not to get out of jail free card. Yeah. Um, but I do think that we show respect in our marriages by truly humbling ourselves and asking for forgiveness for mm -hmm. saying, Hey, um, I'm, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. made a mistake. Yeah, no, that's really good. And so if, as you're listening, if somebody's coming to your mind, 
as you're thinking of these examples that we brought up that we've experienced ourselves, make sure that you share this episode with them so that you can be that support system for them. As Josh mentioned, if you're going through miscarriages, that 100% highly encourage you to reach out to a friend, a community. It doesn't have to be a, a large community, but make sure that you open up and that you share about what mm-hmm. you're you're dealing with so you're not just stuffing those emotions that can really create layers, unwanted layers in life and even, you know, towards your spouse, un, yeah. you know, where you're not even aware of them. Make sure to do that. Now, if you do have requests that you'd like to submit or comments, you can do that on our website at drkellykago.com. You can also go to Instagram at drkellykago.com and reach out to us where we are reading those messages and getting back to you as quickly as we can. And I'll relay them to Mr. Kegel because he's obviously not on the account. Um, but we're so happy to have you here. And yeah. we are so grateful that you're taking the time to whether you're listening or watching on YouTube. We love you so much and we will see you next week.